general, all banks um, were sold off. Even, you know, the funny thing is, um, so far, all the banks that have disclosed earnings have either reported in-line or better than expected results. Nevertheless, that said, they still were sold off, um, and notwithstanding the fact that they're all very cheap already, except for um, BDO, which is a little bit pricey or fairly valued in our opinion. Um, you know, so really, I think banks are a buying opportunity at this this point. On the good part, um, looks like um, they've done a lot already to improve the operations of Smashburger because Smashburger was the major drag um, in 2019. So they've closed down a lot of stores. Um, 2019, of course, is also a low base. Looks like um, there is a chance that Smashburger will have a better year this 2020. So that's the positive part. The negative part, though, is this year will be the first full year uh, consolidation of uh, CBTL or Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. And Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf is still losing money. And although that business is easier to turn around we're not sure if they can um, do it already this year so so yeah long term we're still positive um, but in 2020 earnings might still not be too good I think the property companies especially those that have uh, office properties were sold off quite significantly this year. And the reason why they're sold off um, would be first, um, the Pogo fears, because China is doing a clampdown by, um, I think, confiscating the passports of those who are suspected to be working for Pogos illegally. Um, that would mean a uh, slowdown. In fact, maybe closure of some Pogo. Uh, facilities and of course if you're a landlord if you lease out offices that would mean a slowdown in the take-ups and you know Pogo's accounted for a good chunk of uh, office demand in the past few years maybe 30 to 40 percent so without the Pogo's it's very hard to expect how um, occupancy levels of offices would remain high I think that's one part of it. And yeah, even the residential sales, a certain portion is due to the Chinese buyers. And of course, Chinese uh, travel ban is also somewhat affecting property sales because if they can't come here, they can't buy residential properties. But that said, um, we will have a report where we already took out the value of the offices in the, in the uh, computation of the property company's net asset value. Uh, and we've cut our earnings forecasts um, and then widened our discounts to NAVs. Uh, these property companies are just really so cheap. In other words, the worst is being priced in by the market. Um, and in fact, we have two property companies that already declared or announced share buyback programs. One is Ayala Land. They increased the share buyback program by 25 billion pesos because they feel like their price is just too cheap. A mega world as well declared a share buyback of 5 billion pesos for the next two years because they feel like their stock really is so cheap. And we, we agree because after taking out um, potential impact from Pogos, uh, there's still a substantial upside to the fair value. Okay, so MPI, I think, well, in general, people are just um, still worried about regulations being changed. So, you know, although um, other issues have been resolved, like uh, MPI was already able to sell its shares in the hospital business, raise capital for the toll roads going forward, um, and looks like... Um, We've seen the worst as far as the water concession is concerned. The share price um, remains still very weak. But that said, I think we may see a bottom soon because the company actually declared, again, a share buyback program, um, which it will um, implement in the next three months. So it's quite aggressive. It's quite an aggressive share buyback program. 
So that's the good news. It shows that the company itself believes that it is um, very undervalued. Yeah, I think for Ayala Corp, it's the same thing after um, Manila Water had the uh, issues with the government. Ayala Corp shares were sold down and of course at one point um, the government was questioning the lease contract for the UP property. Um, so after falling that much, Ayala Corp has failed to recover. But uh, I think, uh, again, um, the stock is really very cheap. Uh, if we look at historical average discounts and PEs, the valuation really is very, very cheap. Our problem really with that is um, people think it's the third telco play. But again, I mean, we've read the news that the third telco will be um, delayed. I think execution risk is very high because the company said that they currently have 600 towers and they'll build a thousand towers in I think um, maybe six months or something so I think that's a tall order because the telcos um, globe and smart build on average a thousand towers per year and that will be very challenging if you want to do that in six months uh, secondly we are still waiting for the actual injection of the uh, telco shares into ISM. Right now, there is only an intention of those telco assets to be injected into ISM, but no injection has taken place. So again, there is this risk that um, it might be delayed further. So I, I, I feel like it is quite risky at this stage. And it might take a while actually for the third player to be very profitable. In fact, um, uh, Ernest Koo of Globe Telecom was quoted as saying that it will be a challenge. Or He actually said confidently that he doesn't think the third telco will make money. Um, well, we think it's going to be very challenging for them.